So, Steve Yedlin, uh, you are the cinematographer of a little movie called Star Wars, The Last Jedi. Um, <laughs> yeah, needless to say, I mean, movie. <laughs> yeah, a little indie movie. I hope it does well. Um, yeah. Needless to say, uh, Star Wars beloved uh, franchise, um, really uh, known for its visuals. So what was your level of anticipation like going into this? Uh, well, uh, you know, the the first time that Ryan and I kind of talked about what we were going to do with the movie um, after, you know, he told me that he had paved the way to, to bring me on, uh, you know, we kind of had a discussion about how much do we want to, um, you know, have the visuals informed by the, the original movies and all that. And, you know, he, you know, pretty much he, but we together kind of just came to the conclusion of, we, you know, we just got to tell the story uh, the way, the, the visual way that we tell stories. And, um, you know, Ryan was very confident that, you know, our style anyway, doesn't stray so far from Star Wars that it's going to be, you know, that, it, that it's going to be in another universe. And, um, you know, and it was a way to keep us excited and engaged and just to figure out the, you know, it's, it's hard enough to figure out the absolute best way to, to tell a visual story. And then if you, if you add in some kind of rule where you're trying to guess what someone else would have done in the past to tell this that that kind of that that has a potential for just kind of bogging it down and making it stodgy so um so we decided to be very much informed and um inspired by the original movies especially especially empire strikes back but um but not to take any of that literally and to take it more just as an inspiration well what were your initial um visual ideas for the movie then um, well, I think, I think, you know, Ryan and I try to spend the time, uh, in a really focused way so we don't keep spiraling on, um, on references because references can be, if you're too literal with it, then it's a problem because that's not what you're literally doing and it gets into a false precision thing of which aspect are we talking about? And then, it, and then on the flip side, if you keep it vague, like, um, well, th you know, this is just really inspiring, but we don't want to literally do it, then it can kind of turn into a waste of time if you do it too much, because you have to prep the actual movie you're shooting. You want to use the time to make this stuff that you're actually doing the best. It can be not just, you know, share an appreciation for some existing art. So, so you know, we spent a lot more time actually diving into the exact scenes and saying this scene should feel like this. And you know, the light should come from here and it should, you know, if somebody's in, in a dark area and it looks like light is coming out of this other area, you know, so we, we spent a lot more time kind of with the, with the, with the fine grain authoring of this movie rather than sort of, you know, we kind of dispensed with the, the overall concept, conceptual stuff really quickly and, and got, you know, and kind of rolled up the sleeves and got into designing the actual scenes to tell the best story possible. You mentioned uh, Empire Strikes Back, and I mean, one of the uh, qualities that this movie shares with that one is its use of shadows and uh, a really strong um, kind of darker color palette. Can you talk a bit about that? Thank you. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, I mean, I think that, um, I mean, Ryan and I both love all of the movies, but I think that, that Empire is kind of the closest to our kind of personal, like, the, the kind of stuff that we love to actually get involved in ourselves rather than just, you know, appreciate as, as fans. And, um, yeah, I, I feel like, I feel like empire is not only, um, the most daring, but it's, it, it almost, it also feels like the most conceptual in terms of the lighting being really evocative of the themes and the spaces that people are in. And that's something that's really important to Ryan. You know, he, he, he loves, you know, really striking visuals, but not for their own sake. You know, he doesn't just want stuff to be flashy. He wants it to really tell the story. And, um, you know, that's, that's just something that I love about Empire, just how evocative the lighting is of, of, the, of the spaces and the scenes. Particularly with the um, scenes with uh, Ray and uh, Luke Skywalker and his uh, little island getaway. Um, mm -hmm. I guess off the coast of the Caribbean in space. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, can you talk a bit about uh, designing those sequences? I mean, you, you use a lot of shadows there. There's also a lot of great use of the uh, of the landscape and uh, how he plays with the environment. Can you talk about that? Yeah, um, I mean, there's so much different stuff going on there because you have, you know, you've got uh, 
normal day exteriors, you have really dramatic day exterior, like heightened reality day exteriors, you got sunset, night, you know, you got the stuff in the cave that's kind of half day exterior and whatnot. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of the stuff, I mean, you know, a, lo a lot of the really big sort of conceptual things that are going on with the light there are, you know, on a story and script level. I mean, in terms of the, the sunset streaming into the cave, um, you know, in the, the, um, you know, the, the dankness of the, the under cave. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of it was about really making this evocative and not making it feel accidental, but try, but trying as, be as best as I could figure out how to do to really heighten that, um, heighten it in a way that feels real. So, uh, and it's actually, a, kind of an approach to lighting that, that Ryan has this phrase that he's used for a while that he calls theatrical realism, which we kind of didn't even mention in this movie, but I already know that we've talked about this for years. <laughs> I already know that's how he likes to think about it, where it's, you know, you do want it to feel big and, and um, evocative and not that kind of understated thing that is, is quote real like capital r realism not having to do with reality but just real realism as a style so on the one hand not that but on the other hand not feeling fakey and artificial so it's more like a a height you know he a heightened um sense of the reality so um i don't know if we achieved that but that was kind of the the inspiration <laughs> the inspiring uh principle behind it i, I think i'd I say what you mean by that um there's a lot of um, really big, complicated action sequences in the film. How did you guys prepare for those? Um, did you have any kind of uh, visual inspirations that you used? Uh, how did you plan for that? Um, yeah, so, so uh, you know, Ryan has always from, you know, I've known Ryan for over 20 years and we made student films together and he has always, you know, really designed shots in advance to, for them to cut and for them to tell a story. You know, he's never, you know, he's never been one for scattergun coverage. Like, let's just get a bunch of stuff and we'll figure it out. It's it's always what is the best shot to tell this story. Um, and he loves everything to be very visual. Like even when, you know, even when you just have scenes of people talking, there's usually gestures and physicalities that are, almost like an action scene in that sense and very specific to to telling the story and you know we kind of just continued that except the scale is so big that of course we needed previs and and you know the whole interdepartment effort of of you know stunt guys figuring stuff exactly out for the shots and the visual effects guys uh figuring out what they needed to be practical and and um uh, you know the you know you know me transmitting a lot of exact information to the to the grip so that they could so we could actually make sure the camera could move in the way it needed to even if we were in a prohibitive space or whatever but it was kind of you know oddly it was kind of the exact same process as, as when we did the tiniest movies with Ryan but just uh, you know but just a much larger physical thing but that but we had all the these amazing people that, that know how to do that so I you know we would you know, we would each do our part of it, and it would it would kind of work out the same as as if it was uh, something smaller, but just with more people working on it. Well, I mean, you mentioned those smaller movies of uh, Ryan's, and, and one of the great qualities of this movie is how uh, deeply it delves into character. Uh, I think much more so than we would expect from a movie like this. Can you talk a bit about that? Um, uh, it seems like you should probably ask Ryan. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, in the sense stuff, of like, you know, how you, um, I mean, I, I'll, like I'll, shooting those scenes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, firstly, that's, I mean, that's just one of the many reasons that I'm, you know, besides loving to work with Ryan, I'm just a huge fan of his stuff. I mean, I just think it's, it's so smart on the character and thematic level. Um, and, and, and of course visual, um, but, I mean, the visual is the part that I do and the kind of character and thematic stuff is the part that I can kind of just stand back and just be an enormous fan of. Um, but I, I think because everything works together so well, I think I think part of what it means is he, ha he has, and, and he's such a gentleman, I think it means that he has the, the, the trust and admiration of everybody, the cast and you know, everybody on the crew like is, is just excited to be there and that so the thing is already great just based on his You know his kind of vision and, and storytelling 
um, and film craft uh, prowess, but then it's just raised to even another level because you get all of the all of these really really talented people together, and then they're inspired by him, his personality, and it, and that just brings it to even another level. How has that uh, working relationship between the two of you uh, evolved from film to film to film? You did student films, you did Brick, Brothers Bloom, Looper, and now this. How's it evolved? Um, I think, uh, you know, I mean, in a, in a lot of ways, it's kind of the same as it's always been. I think the, the, the you know, the, the most, the way that it's changed the most is just as, you know, as Ryan grows, you know, you know, even, uh, even more powerful in the ways of the force, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, just some of the details of how he does stuff changes. And I just, uh, you know, adapt to that. Like, I think he's, you know, he's gotten even more precise with, um, with lensing, uh, you know, where, you know, in terms of, he, you know, him holding that finder and we measure it and put the, you know, make sure the lens is exactly where he, where he held it as opposed to, you know, he has a, you know, the way we used to do it would be more like he has a concept of the shot and we, you know, from a storyboard and stuff, and we kind of just find the best way to, to get that shot. So it, it's more just, um, a sort of administrative difference. It's not really a, you know, um, an, an overarching difference, but, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, also I think he, in a lot of ways, he trusts me even more to where he's not, you know, there, you know, there's even less, less and less any kind of second guessing about lighting. He, it would be more, you know, he's, he's telling me, you know, he can communicate to me with the lighting. He can communicate to me on a conceptual level and, and he trusts me to, to make that, to somehow interpret that into something that both looks great and thematically and evocatively gets gets what he wants. Uh, I got to ask, it was recently announced before this movie came out that there was going to be a new trilogy shepherded by Ryan Johnson. Since you are a frequent collaborator of his, are you returning for that? Would you return for that? Uh, I, I would. You know, I, I, uh, <laughs> I think we're very far off from knowing uh, what's going on with that. So, um, so do, we, do we have to... Yeah, okay. you gotta go. All right. Well, that's we have to go. Yeah. Anyway, Steve Yedlin, thank you so much. Congratulations on the movie. I hope that people go see it. I know it's got a lot of uh, obstacles against it in the uh, in the Christmas movie viewing, but yeah, check well, it out. Yeah, well, yeah. Support indie movie, as Ryan said. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Thanks so much. Have a good one. All right. One. Thank you. Bye.